Thank you. Um, well, um, we have time delay, so I, I'm going to try to make uh, as best as possible. Um, maybe uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. So I'm trying to make this time a, a little different presentation that I'm used to do. Um, we're going to see a lot of symbolic and historic things uh, between the flat earth because for me that is the most uh, important part, understand uh, who present as the heliocentric model. So it's going to be a little mix up, you know, with technical stuff, uh, symbolic things. Um, it's going to be really deep, the rabbit hole this time. So I hope you, you, you can understand me. Uh, first of all, thanks to Gary, to Didi for inviting me here. Thanks. Uh, this is going to work. You, you promise yeah, me? Yeah, try it. Try it. Okay. I'm going to try it like the fifth time. Um, let me... Let me just... One more time. You lied to me. Huh? She's a chef sweet. Hang on, wait. Let me get back to it. Okay. Um, so thanks all of you for having me here. It's really a pleasure to uh, be part of Flutter's um, conventions. Yeah, it's a lot of work to put something like this, uh, you know, in real life. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to do this kind of thing. So. For me, coming from Argentina, it's also really, you know, uh, an adventure. Um, in South America and the, in the Spanish language in general, there are a lot of thousands of people um, coming to the flatter reality. So um, they gonna they they gonna see this also. I hope you. They say that my English is so bad that they can understand. You know, so <laughs> maybe it's like a mother language, something like that. Uh, you want to try the sound? I, I, I do for you. No, it's not working. You want? Yeah. Yeah, because it's in Spanish. The computer. Uh, okay. Here. Uh, reproduction. Yeah. Where do you want to go? I try. Uh, mm. I try. No, it's it's better than I used to. It's Spanish, yeah. Yeah, it's Spanish. <laughs> okay, li li leave it like that. It's it's no problem. I think. Um, it's for sound right? Okay, maybe like this. No. Leave it like that. They, they would not have believed. Please, no problem, no problem. Relax, man. You are more nervous than me. <laughs> so, um, so thanks, thanks for having me here. I resume, you know, like three times my intro. Um, so, well, uh, this is my YouTube channel. Um, I have 90% of the content in Spanish, uh, but I have a few 10% in English. So if you want to check out, that is my YouTube channel. I, I don't want to forget to give the thanks also to the Globebuster guys because they allowed me to, to be part of, of this uh, event. You know, they receiving me every Sunday in the Globebuster show, so thanks for the more guy, uh, Sheram and Bob. And uh, okay, let's start it. Um, I have, um, well, my name is Uh I have 37 years old. I was born in La Plata, it's a city near to Buenos Aires, and like Washington City or like London City uh, is founded by Freemasonry. So I need to lead with that every day that I <laughs> walk around. And um, my shop um, for, you know, for living is the visual effects technical director from a quite time uh, since now. 
Uh, I do 2D and 3D motion graphics, so um, my, my introduction to the flat earth was um, from Matt Powerland, like, uh, like I say before yesterday, but uh, also when I start looking the visual effects that NASA uses uh, in his uh, live feeds and that kind of stuff. Um, so that part of my uh, professional background allowed me maybe to, uh, you know, get more deeper into the NASA hoax. And as a researcher, um, I am a researcher since 13, 14 years uh, from now. I'm studying like the most of you, you know, looking into the 9-11, the um, vaccination, the geoengineering things, that kind of thing. But what really waking me up uh, at the age of 21, 22 years old was an out of body experience. Uh, before that, I just, you know, uh, be, was a regular guy based on science. Uh, I get uh, out for religions like uh, 15 years old. And I believe that uh, when you die, nothing more happened. And um, the universe um, showed me that that is not the case. <laughs> so <laughs> I start to research in metaphysics things and um, that kind of stuff based on that experience. Uh, then from four years now, I become a flat earther researcher with, you know, uh, what that means in the one more time again? Yeah, just a few seconds. He's just going to do a second. Oh, OK. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that is a little about my background. I'm also, uh, I'm not as an, an specialist, but I take a lot of time researching in the um, language, uh, you know, the real meaning of the words that like a, more, a little deeper than the etymology. And um, also the, and I recommend this for everyone here, which is the shamanic medicine. Um, you know, the Dr. Hammer um, research that are really amazing. And if you want to understand a little more why we, you know, get sick and based, of course, the, the, the normal medicine, they know that the 99% of the disease are psychological. And uh, if you want to understand that, and you know, at least, uh, of course, uh, you're not going to avoid death, but at least you can understand why you get some disease, from the head pain to a cancer. It's all uh, emotional, and um, you think it's done? Leave it like that, man. Please, <laughs> it's no problem. I put the mic, and it's it's no problem. It's no problem, leave it like that. Um, give applause, please. Thank you. You try it, you try it. Uh, let me back again. This is the sixth time. <laughs> the next time I call security, okay? <laughs> so, please. So, I really recommend the neurological, you know, um, the, the, the neurological part of the disease, and that is the shamanic medicine. Um, well, this is my YouTube channel. I have a lot of, like I say before, a lot of content in Spanish, but I am also participate with a few uh, English people that allow me to be part of the English community. Santos Bonacci is one of the greatest men that I ever met. Mark McQueen, uh, Antonio Subirat, if he's listen, hey man. Uh, Globebusters, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, you know it, every one of those. So in Argentina, uh, I am not um, a media guy, but this topic of flat earth bring me into the uh, mass media situation. You know, uh, so I start having a little participation in TV programs, radio show, and that allow to grow the movement because uh, it's getting out just simply YouTube channels. And that's also cost me a letter from the Astrophysics University from my city uh, because I was 
in the public TV program saying that the dinosaur was a hoax, the ISS doesn't exist, the moon landing never happened, and uh, these guys start to put a little nervous. So they present an official letter against me, calling me liar and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. They, they, they sign it, everything. Of course, uh, that, you know, I just make it and drop away. But I show this because these are the implications that uh, we have to lead uh, for talking about this. It's, it's just, uh, I, I, you know, they, we, our voices are hearing uh, out there. That is, they are some worry. It's just not a, not, you know, local thing. It's, this is around the plane uh, that um, we are gr really growing up. Of course, in my country and in South America, there is exist the same kind of fake news, you know, the in Spanish version, but we have the same type of media, so they pick up the information from here and just replicate uh, in the journal. So it's the same thing. The, the world is real small. So um, so what made me ask uh, the question that the, can the air be flat? And I showed this uh, little clip always because uh, after enter in the flat earth, um, you know, I, I have like a, 20 days continue viewing videos. <laughs> the first time that I come across with this subject. And one of the you know, most important thing to me was um, looking all these guys uh, trying to explain that the world isn't flat. So, you know, in 2017, 2016, uh, seeing this, you know, this kind of leaders talking about, the, you, you don't hear him talking about reptilians or Anunnakis or uh, cancer or whatever. And, and the only topic that these guys abort is flat earth. So uh, I don't know who write the speech uh, to these guys, but they are really aware that this is this truth is coming out. So um, I'm going to start playing some clips and, um, you know, just for you can can hear it. So I say that the world is round, and someone else says it's flat. If some of these folks were around when Columbus set sail, they, 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 they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Let me just underscore. You don't need to be a scientist to know that the Earth is round. And we need to make clear that those members of the Flat Earth Society... The, me the current members of the Flat Earth Society in Congress... Uh, we got some people at high levels of aspiration who are the Flat Earth. We have Flat Earth Caucus. The Earth isn't flat. In other breaking news, the world is round, not flat. <laughs> and you don't need to be a scientist. <clears throat> and we need as responsible leaders to take account of science. So we're preparing a contingency communications procedure. And guess what? We don't need that anymore. There should be a legitimate debate between whether the Earth is round or flat. Because after all, any idiot can walk outside we're and look and see we're not allowed flat. to debate this. Is NASA lying to us? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is just a short clip um, from 2010, 11 to our days, uh, 2017. But if I if if I want to pay for that kind of marketing, you know, because these guys is all the time talking about us. I mean, that is impossible to afford, and uh, it must be, you know, when you see this kind of thing, you not, you start thinking what's going on because. This kind of leader, they don't want to waste time, you know, in conspiracy theories. Uh, if if really don't be important. So um, the fact is that one in four Americans believe that the sun uh, goes around the earth. I mean, 100 million people in America believe that. Uh, I'm not saying the flat earth, but you know, if the sun goes around the earth, that is. Uh, big issue for heliocentric model. And one in three Russians believe the same thing. And that is important because those countries are the supposedly the most, you know, better in space uh, 
concern staff. And that is a red flag to, to keep in mind. But of course, uh, right now, in only five years, we have like 20 million uh, videos uploading to YouTube. So that speaks for itself, you know, the statistics. The number doesn't lie, like NASA. So uh, this is the real number. Uh, Dave Murphy there, you know. Um, so it's really amazing because I, I never see something in my 14 years of uh, researcher, as a researcher, I never see something like that growing so quickly uh, with some kind of these numbers. Uh, it's really, really uh, something's going on. No? And um, recently, um, the, the problem, I believe the problem comes in this way because now the flat earth is considered like a, a political issue because we know what is going on if the earth is flat. So I'm going to play this little clip for, from the news. And the number of people who think so is growing. You may think it sounds crazy, but in 2017, thousands, if not millions of people still believe the world is flat. Now, scientists say that's actually a symptom of a bigger problem, and it's the subject of tonight's special report. Flat Earth theory is actually getting pretty popular. Yeah, believe it or not, in 2017, the number of people who believe the Earth is flat is actually growing. The biggest concern with the Flat Earth movement is how fast it's gaining steam. To leave you with a scary thought this Halloween night, scientists are worried that Flat Earth could become a political issue like climate change, vaccination, or evolution. <laughs> Guys, all right, fascinating stuff. All right, Aaron, thank you. So we have Peter Sullivan. All right. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, all right, Peter Sullivan. So we're talking science stuff. All of this with the global warming and that, a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. Uh, and, you know, when you see this, that kind of guys talking, okay, Donald Trump is not a serious guy, but, uh, you know, that's are just politicians. But this guy is a Nobel Prize, you know, and physicist. And uh, he, he's Ivar um, Gavier, so you can find it on um, Google. Uh, he really do great lectures, so I, I just, you know, take a 50 seconds uh, part of that, but this is a physicist talking about the global warming hoax, you know, and he, he talks about how he's pushed uh, to say that the global warming is real, you know. So the other guy is a president, he's just a puppet, but this guy is a physicist, so for those who like physicists spoke, so I, I think, sorry for that. Uh, let me see if I can, no, no. <laughs> I can scrap the video, so let me do this. Sorry for this interruption, but I want to, you can hear it. I'm gonna play it in this mode. Does it wrap? There we go. Religion, because you can't discuss it, is not proper. And they say you cannot discuss global warming because we believe it's happening. So it's a new religion, like scientists, you know. Don't ask a brat. Results from a new study reveal a third of young American millennials aren't sure that the Earth is round. National poll found that 18 to 24 year olds are the largest group in the country who believe the Earth could be flat. It seems the older you get, the more you believe the Earth is round. Here's what 18 to 24 year olds said when asked, do you believe the world is round or flat? 66% have always believed the Earth is round, yippee. 9% always thought the world was round, but more recently became skeptical. 5% always thought the world was flat, but more recently had doubts. Good for them. 4% always believed the world is flat. That people should have a, a better understanding of why it is they believe what they believe. I will just say, because all, the, the answer really is because all the smart people say so. And that right. should never be your baseline of why you think something is or is not true. <laughs> I don't think I get applause for that, that was nice. So Buck just said the Earth is flat. That is freaking me out. All right. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> and um, I, I'm gonna keep in this mode if if you don't mind, because uh, some videos I need to scrub forward and backward, and I don't want to, you know, uh, I just reduce this um, and let me. Okay, uh, I'm gonna leave in this way. So you hear it for the, you know, for the journalist guy. Uh, there are two important things in that audio, in that video, which is um, the first one is why we believe in we believe in what we believe, and the other thing is uh, at you know when get older you are more heliocentric guy, but when you are younger you are more flattered guy, and that is really important because that is when where everything starts is in the educational system is when you are young that they brain our uh, they wash our brain because it's obviously more easy so uh, when you start to look in this situation about um, you know be a young guy and uh, who puts uh, information in your mind um, is the UNESCO that is because a lot of people start saying, okay, but this flatter conspiracy, you need to get so many people involved, you know, the scientists, the pilot, the engineering, the astrophysicists, the physicists. Uh, so you cannot, you, you cannot do that. And it's not need to do that because uh, all the educational system, you can read it here, educational, scientific, and cultural are made by only one organization, and that is all you need. Uh, all the plans in the universities, in the schools, in the media, all are based on this institution. And, you know, of course, everybody knows the logo of the ONU. Uh, and in the, we, we're going to start to make this little coincidence, uh, because, for example, if you pronounce uh, ONU backwards, is number one in Spanish. And our language comes from, you know, Greeks and Latin, and they, they, they don't lie. They just make things that we can understand because we don't have the same education that these guys have. So all the times to like, you know, clean karma, they don't lie. They say the things in your face. The problem is that you don't understand what they say. So uh, this is, you know, the principal institution uh, that carry on the education of all the occidental part of the world. That's easy, easy, you know, trick us. So when you start to look in who founded these institutions, uh, the first guy is Julian Huxley. And um, here we are going to start see, uh, let me, okay, that's better. Here you, we are going to start to see that these guys are all, uh, you know, occultist uh, backgrounds. You know, they all have, they all share that situation, and that is really, really important. Um, Julian was, you know, the first. Uh, of, of course, they put nice words uh, at the beginning. They say that there was an evolutionary biologist, greater humanist. All words to cover that the true that is an oceanist, that is, you know, a British international oceanist. He was the first director of the UNESCO and he supports the work of Charles Darwin. So with that sentence, you know, <laughs> you have everything you need to know about Julian Huxley. But one of the brothers uh, called Aldous Huxley, he was an mysticism and you start seeing like a all these families share that kind of thing, you know, all the time. Uh, so the thing is, uh, this guy, uh, he wrote A Happy World. He wrote Alice in Wonderland. So you can start to see the connections here. He wrote Ice, The Iceland, which is, you know, like uh, how treat humans as animals, something like that, to take the organs. And uh, of course, they grow the door of perceptions. So the guys who founded UNESCO, they are really occultist guys. They are not, I don't say good people, but they have knowledge that they don't share with us. So that is one of the problem to, un to understand the flat earth. So this, you know, it's, it's important because um, when you think in terms of spiritual level, uh, 
anytime you reincarnate, uh, you come with you know a biological software that allow to understand the world that surround you because you need to survive, and uh, that is why when you are young, you believe what you observe and what the reality of the nature tell you. But as you grow up, you're gonna start to receive some upgrades for these guys. So that is so easy to trick us. And this goes really, really deeply. Uh, I learned this from the channel of Robert Bassano. He is not anymore uh, on YouTube, but he, he leave a, a, a nice uh, research in his channel. And this comes from the University of Illinois, and is from 2007. And uh, this is a technical report across cultural investigation of children's conceptions about the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon based on Greeks and American data. So you can see here the, the important. They keep you know, trying to get better brainwashing the young boys because that is the key to making believe in heliocentric model. So here you have you know, uh, just the abstract of that. And look, uh, here is what the result says. It's based on 90 children from Greek and 60 children from United States. And the result of the study show us that the children in both samples construct similar initial concept about the Earth. Um, both the Greeks and the American children conceptualized that the Earth as flat and stationary, and so it was located in the middle of the solar system. <laughs> I know, I, I believe they know what I'm talking. Um, they also thought that the things fall down no toward the center of the spherical Earth, and that the day and night cycle is caused by the movement of the sun and the moon. Uh, in the process of changing this concept, the Greeks and the American children form similar misconceptions. So they assume that there are misconceptions right away, you know, which uh, <laughs> is, is a pretty, you know, strange because that is uh, what all of us see, you know, there is, I think, 80 astronauts supposedly see the world from outside, but the rest we see all the time the same things. That, but this show how important it is to, you know, um, infiltrate the educational system. In fact, in Argentina, for example, if you're going to study for being a psychologist, in the introduction course, you're going to find these three topics, and I translate it for you. The first one is going to talk about the importance of the heliocentric model, because this, this theory locates the sun as the center of the universe, displacing the paradigm of Ptolemy that placed the Earth in the privileged place. So we quit to a privileged place based on what? Because the observations show that the sun is moving and we are the center. Uh, developed by Copernicus in 14th century and uh, retaken by Galileo in the 17th century, creating the modern astronomy. The second thing that you're going to be aware if you, are, if you want to be a psychologist, of course, is the evolution of the species. Uh, I don't need to say what it's about because everybody knows we come from monkeys. And the third thing you're going to try to brainwash is with the discovery of the unconsciousness. So basically, Freud, uh, after a period of time, when he comes to live in England with all kind of privilege, they uh, you know, leave the instructions to how to make the uh, feminist revolution, revolution in the beginning of the 50, 1950s. After all that, uh, he also tell us that um, even our thoughts are not our thoughts, you know, because the subconscious is going to trick you all the time. You are not even in your spirit. I mean, that is the kind of, you know, talking a few words uh, where you're going to study if you want to be a psychologist. But uh, maybe someday we need to go to, you know, a psychologist because we are flat earther and maybe that is going to be a disease. <laughs> so how are you going to fight with a psychologist? Um, but this is how deep it's, it, it goes. You know, I mean, uh, all these professionals, receive the same educational system. So that is why they are not part of the conspiracy. They, they are part of the brainwashing that every one of us uh, suffer. And if you notice one of this career, you cannot study in any place in the world. And um, 
that is astronaut. You cannot be studied to be an astronaut. You must be selected by a finger, you know? Like uh, be a 33 degree mason, you must be selected. And that is a little strange because why is, you know, it's like being Pope. You cannot study to be Pope. In fact, if you are a woman, you're never gonna be a Pope. So you can start see how the heliocentric model is a masculine, uh, you know, model that trying all the time to get out the feminine part because the feminine part is the creativity, is you know, is the, the the emotional part, and they trying to get rid of that part. That is why we live in the paradigm of the the right is who have the reason, you know. If you are, uh, you know, left side, you don't worth nothing. And um, um, this has to be, you know, how the universities um, come from. Uh, I mean, how, how they, it, this is my concept, you know, you know it's not just uh, scientific proof that this is where the first university come from, but here we're gonna start entering in the scientific um, uh, round. Uh, university, of course, means one verse, one story, you know, one model that is universe is just one and who creates the one that is uh, the important thing so you must be remembered that um, nobody has access to free you know quote uh, educational system until 50 years back you know uh, for the beginning of the 20th century the most of the world was uneducated so that is how far the things goes and the first one, uh, if you want to really have access some, to some kind of uh, education, you must be a religious person. That was the first one that knows how write, how read, uh, have access to really instruments to you know, put uh, words on paper. I mean, uh, the paper was supposedly invented in China 100 years before Christ, so uh, you must be in the novel families to get access to the, if you are a poor guy or normal guy, you don't even know how to write. So that is a red flag for every religious book that we consume today. Because I, don't, I, I, I am not against any religions, anyone can do whatever you want, but think about it, the gospels who supposedly was writing by the, you know, the guys who was who walks uh, with Jesus? They don't have access to write nothing. They don't come home and say, "Okay, I'm gonna write what the master teach me now. Give me a pen." They don't have that kind of instrument. So, that kind of text was writing by the same guy that today print our educational and religious book. I don't say that uh, religions are fake because I believe that they are real, but we need to, you know, trying to separate and really study really deeply because that is, uh, you know, uh, the, the real thing. They don't have things to write. Only the, you know, religious people have the instruments to write down at that time. So this is where the first university start. I mean, university, but, you know, under the concept of, has, of or, or, to have instruments to write down ideas, concepts, and that kind of things. And um, once they, you know, this comes from Babylon and until our, uh, to our days. But in the, sometimes in the, you know, in the history uh, around the 16th century, one, this, the, the religious order has everything tied up. They start to expand and the first guy who received education uh, was alchemist, you know, occultist. That was the first guy that take access to no unbias, I mean, to, you know, just the, a few things, you know, the, the, the religious people, the, the, the really high priest say, okay, we need to brainwash the world. So we need people to teach what we want uh, to, to, you know, to this guy learn. So. They start, you know, selecting people and say, okay, I'm gonna teach you some things uh, just for you can do uh, my purpose. So the first guy was, you know, the alchemist, the occultist guys who start really have information. And that is all about the Kabbalah, all about the, you know, the mysticism's art 
the hermetics art, that kind of things. Of course, uh, after that, uh, you know, like uh, in the 17th, 18th, 19th century, if you want to have access to education, you literally need to give your life to a Vatican. I mean, you, you cannot go to university because at that time that doesn't exist. You need to go uh, to a monastery or to a convent. I mean, you need to go to ins uh, religious institutions and you need to sacrifice your life just for, uh, you know, get knowledge. And the knowledge you're gonna get is like the same UNESCO, but at, at that time. Um, and it's really strange, uh, you know, not strange, but this is the, the things that, uh, for example, the word library in uh, Spanish, uh, it's called biblioteca. And the word biblioteca, it's come from Bible. I mean, we know that the Bible is, you know, a collect of writings. It's not just one book who someone uh, writes. Uh, so that gives you, you know, a little hint where the books really are. They are in the library, in the biblioteca, because the religious people is who they have that kind of information. And um, after all that, uh, a few families in Italy uh, start founding the Jesuit and the Pope order. That is where the Catholic, you know, uh, church begins, in, so to speaking. Um, it was the Medici, the Ornesi, the Farnesi, those guys we still live in and still use the same surname and they still have their own companies, you know. They founded the Jesuit order and the Pope. They are who they founded. They are not, uh, you know, the Pope is not a religious guy that got selected and nothing like that. Uh, was founded it was, uh, at the same that the science is founded today. And here start to appear the first scientists. Um, for example, I'm going to show you know a little bit of examples of why we believe that the world is spherical. For example, this guy, one of uh, the first Jesuit called uh, Anastasis Kirchber, he was considered by his fellow as the Leonardo da Vinci of the, his time. He was honored with the Master of 100 Arts. And this guy, for example, what was the first one, of course, he was uh, the mystery of the human knowledge. He was uh, an occultist. He was a magician. <laughs> he was an, astro um, an astronomy. But all the time, what you're going to see is the relationship with uh, mysticism. It doesn't matter if you are a scientist, if you are a religious person, if you are a Jesuit, if you are you know, Egyptian, all the time, the guys who give us the actual science, they are not scientists, they are magicians. So we must be, you know, keep, keep in mind of that. Uh, he studied the hermetics, magic, and alchemy. Uh, so it's even, you know, he, he studied the symbology, the secrecy, the magic, the Kabbalah. So even the Kabbalah is, you know, maybe they share knowledge with the Hebrew people, but the Jesuit is also involved in that kind of knowledge. And this guy was the first guy who proposed that the earth has a core inside. So it's not come from any scientist, any modern scientist. This Jesuit, create the idea, you know, you can see the angels, you know, blowing the winds, <laughs> and that is the core of the earth. So he, you know, maybe one day wake up and say, you know, inside of a spherical planet there is a core. And here you can see another depictions from the um, Coriolis effects. This is like a, the first, you know, Coriolis effects uh, concept and uh, the sun, the moon, Polaris. Maybe you can see here that this is the shadow produced maybe by Polaris. Maybe the eclipse are not, uh, you know, the lunar eclipse are not produced, of course, by the shadow of the Earth. Maybe there is some other object that produce that shadow. And um, OK, that, that, that was the nucleus uh, or core idea. And it's really nice because the word nucleus um, core for English people in Spanish is nucleo. I don't know if here is the same word. But um, 
they all, all the time, they refer, for example, Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci means give life. And Leonardo, it's Leo, lion, is the lion. And we know who families use the lion in his uh, shields, you know, family shields. And uh, when you start to analyze the word, for example, the word nucleus, mean, nu means light. That is where the root of the word north come from. My channel is called Nur for everyone because Nur or Nor means light of the center. North means light of the center. That is what this means. It's not, you know, some geographical point. It's referred to a light in the center. And the word nucleus means light for Cleo. You remember Cleopatra? Is the patria of the lion. That is the symbolic of the lion in Egypt. So it's like they put like uh, his symbol inside the earth all the time. In fact, to access this in the mathematical world, you want to call radio. And radio, if you separate the word, you have Ra Dio, Ra God inside of the earth. So, you know, you can believe what you want. You can maybe believe that this all coincidence, you know, coincidence, but when you start look really deeply, you, you can see how this matrix is start forming. So don't forget that supposedly the most important library in the world is <laughs> from Vatican. So you cannot have access to that kind of education. You know, so that that is how deep the things goes. And of course, after you know, first the pre the higher priests make the history of universities, then they pass to alchemists, which is some kind of scientist. And then they found it and create the free masonry to take care of the universities. Because in any university, you're going to find free masonry. In every book text, in every scientific facts, always it's going to be a free uh, masonry teach you what you need to believe or what you need to um, research. And the first guy who found it, the uh, Freemason, one of the father of the Freemasonry is a guy come born here in, in British. His name is um, Elias, at least the artistic name, because Ashmole means uh, dragon, means dragon. Uh, Elias Ashmole is considered one of the father of the Freemasonry. He contributed to this extensive knowledge related to Egyptian and Hermetic symbols. And that is why all the time in Freemasonry, you're going to see Egyptian symbols. Because they took the knowledge you know, well, from Babylons, then from Egypt, then from Greeks. Then, and all the time, you're going to see this situation. That is why I talk about the lion inside of the uh, supposedly spherical Earth. So they put, you know, their symbols, but we don't have the uh, under the, you know, the, the the knowledge to understand that uh, he deal with astrologers, alchemists, mathematicians. He founded the Royal Society of London and the Philosophical Society of Oxford. So he wants to make, uh, you know, everything he wants because he lived with all these kind of professions. He founded the Royal Society of London. So. This is like a, you know, a first approach of the UNESCO at that time. But this guy, uh, this guy was a geocentric guy in that time. So that the idea that, no, the Greeks know that the sun uh, was fixed and the earth revolved around the sun, that is all right. Uh, you can see some concept art uh, from that idea. This, you can see the first idea of the spherical earth projecting shadow, I don't know where, because in supposedly space, there is no any particles to project nothing. Uh, you can see here the moon. You can here see all the books that uh, this guy uh, wrote, of course, all based on mysticism and magical forces and that kind of things. But uh, one of the guys who come um, later working with Elias Ashmole was this guy, Robert Plot. You know, nice surname <laughs> for what he's doing. And I mean, it's another coincidence, the surname of this guy, because this guy was the first who proposed the crop cycles. Uh, his guy, this guy was the first who proposed the dinosaurs. I mean, remember what plot means. 
this guy was the first uh, keeper of the Ashmolean Museum, of, I mean the museum of the other guy. Uh, in, six, um, in 1686, British natural, naturalist, naturalist Robert Plot uh, reported on rings of arc of mushroom as like, a, oh, look that, maybe a demon, an alien, do it. No, that, that is something to, to be aware because we believe that the crop cycle is something that born in 20th you know, century. Like this is a modern thing, but not. It's from the cent a few centuries ago and all is related with Freemasonry. Remember in the, I used to study the crop cycle because I, I, I was a big fan of NASA and alien stuff and that kind of thing. And the most important message in the crop cycle um, uh, world is this measured here that supposedly comes uh, from this information on the Voyager disk. So if you are flat earther, it's very easy to understand that uh, we make the crop cycles. There is no alien force making it. Maybe there are military guys or some kind of technology that we don't know, but where is the Voyager? I mean, who read the message of the Voyager? Is, there is no space, there is no Voyager, there is nothing about that. So these meshes, it's not come from any species out there reading this disc on the Voyager uh, spaceship. So lie, it's easy as that. And then supposedly, uh, this is the other one that if you want to believe that an alien comes and make his portrait here and that kind of thing, I can do nothing for you. <laughs> that's the that's real thing. And you know, this is like a ISS concept. I'm gonna show you later how the ISS get better from the 70 to our days. And supposedly the aliens get better drawing the crop cycles because they start like this, you know? And then as the technology grows, even the aliens grows, you know, how to draw and they, come with that kind of things. It's a real exchange for advanced civilization. But you can see a lot of documentary showing how easy it is in one night, uh, three guys doing uh, really complex crop cycles without breaking the, the plants and everything like that. And remember, you guys have the most uh, amount of crop cycles here in England. And the guy who proposed that is from England. So <laughs> <laughs> of course you're gonna have it. So, you know, the dinosaur thing, for me, that, that is my concept, because it's come from this guy, too. I mean, it's not coming from any evolutionary guy on 20th century. It's like, you know, you take the concept of the turtle, you mix it up with the dragon of Komodo, with the rhino, and with the giraffe, and you paint in green, put some spike, and here is the dinosaur. Because it's like a reverse engineering, you know? You take the giraffe and they make the bronchiosaurus. <laughs> they take the rhino and they make the triceratops. I mean, it's just that, uh, you know? They inspire on nature because the guy, this guy was a naturalist and he painted green and put some spike and there, there you have the, the, the dinosaur idea. So as you keep going, all the time you're gonna see the Jesuit intervention in every place of education. In fact, one of the you know, first universities has the name of, uh, this is in the United States, has the name of the founder of the Jesuit, which was the Loyola, Ignacio de Loyola. And this is the guy, you know, here. And uh, there are the symbols of the educational system from Vatican. And maybe you believe, uh, like, for example, in Argentina, you have supposedly freely education without any religious behind that. But that is a lie. In, in, in fact, we're going to see later why. But I mean, there is no real education without all these guys uh, looking for behind you know, the scenes. And of course, they support the global earth because they, they created that concept. And in every symbol you're going to see out there, is gonna be writing in letters that you don't uh, have the knowledge to understand what it says. That is the idea behind to give, you know, the priest talking in Latin, you know, in this in his ceremonies. For example, this is the uh, shield of uh, Yale University. 
looks at veritas, light is the true. And we know when this guy talks about light, you know, we know how, why they talk about light. And in fact, when you get, you know, when you finish your educational system in a lot of countries, you dress like this because they convert you in the Jesuit. Symbolically, it's just that. That is why you dress in this way. And the people, they believe, I don't know what they believe because in Argentina it's not that kind of uh, ceremony, but uh, I don't think so that the, those guys uh, know where I, where, what they are wearing. Uh, for example, another terminology in Latin to us don't understand what they're talking about. One of the part of the ONU, uh, you know, responsible for our security called SHAPE, means the Supreme Headquarters Allied Power Europe. They have, of course, the pyramid symbol and that, all that kind of stuff, but in Latin they say the price of freedom is surveillance. That is a really high cost, you know. <laughs> uh, in our times with all drones, technology out there, all cameras, uh, that is why they maybe they do it. And just a little example for you understand what I'm talking uh, when I when I trying to to say what the importance of the, the meaning of the word are. Supposedly the you know the the old record that we have about language is come from the Sumerian and pre-Sumerian people. Uh, after that, you must be believed that we live in caves, you know, ripping off a woman of the hair and that kind of things. And after that. It, Babylon city appears, <laughs> nobody knows how. But we know that we are in, like an, you know, a spontaneous creation. So these guys uh, were the first language, then come these other languages until our days that we only use uh, the Anglo-Sajon and uh, the Spanish language. And one of the race that rule the world, they never change the language, which are the Hebrew. They keep speaking the original language. And that, you know, that has a meaning. But we are, look how many photocopies, if you want to see in that way, we have until our language. And for example, all the time, we, we know we live in the slave system. And all the time, for example, the system tell, tell you, hey, you must be, you know, the first thing is a family, is a family, is a family. But family means, come from famulus and means servant or slave. So when you talk about my family, you're talking about your slave group. They don't talk about family, they talk about bloodlines. Because what you share is lineage, is blood, you don't share slavery. That is the real thing. So I don't spoke anymore like saying, okay, my family, I go to with my family on vacation. I talk, you know, because what you say is what you create. So you need to start changing some words if you want to be more free, if you want to see in that way. Um, but like I tell you before, be a famous, be part of our family, be our slave. Because that is what they are telling you, you know, in, in, in symbolic language. Be a famous is just be a slave with the original world. That is why they propose all the time, hey, you wanna be a famous, you wanna be a famous. Yeah, yeah, I wanna be. And if you become a famous, you lose your life and you're just working for them. We know that this guy, they, they, they don't even have money. I mean, all the money of these guys have is in a digital account. So you, if you don't do what they want you do, they just press a button and erase your account that easy. So, to understand all these kind of things, you must be understand one of the most important um, concepts out there based on educational, different education, which of course come from Greeks, you know, so you, not, you, you must be uh, see in, you know, in, with suspicious way because the guys who print it today, of course, they, I believe that they, they suppress some information, but that is the trivium and the quadrivium. These are considered the liberal arts of education. So all the time they use a liberal you know, system and for us they give a, a slavery system. In fact, that here says literally, uh, these disciplines was 
cultivated by free men as opposed to the servile arts, typically of the servant or slave. So the, our education system is based on be slave, not be free man. And that is why they are so afraid to art, because if you become an artist, whatever discipline you want to do, you're going to get free. You're going to be independent, because you don't need to wake up all the days to go to work for other people. That is why they don't want to the feminine part, you know, in our life. And uh, this is a quote from one of the biggest motherfuckers out there, <laughs> which is Chippy Morgan. You know, we know that this guy prepared, you know, the Titanic for do their own things and bring down Tesla. And he said, "Millionaires don't do astrology; billionaires do." And that is important, the importance of understanding how the planet works, because the planets are light, are energy. So you can use that energy for good, for bad, but you need to understand why they are there. And uh, of course, in the, in, you know, in the heliocentric model, they, that, that doesn't have any sense, because millions of years away, what is going to affect us? Nothing. You know, the moon rock affects the uh, feminine uh, menstrual cycle what is a piece of rock i mean that doesn't have any sense but if you start looking in the way that everything out there is here near that is why this energy affects us and of course all, all you know all the start out there you can see you must be see in different way they are just for guide us we live in the you know uh, polar way polar world so um these things can guide us physically because you can use it to navigation, you know, to take a position on the real uh, material world. But also, they can guide you in spiritual, a spiritual uh, world, and that is the part that they suppress of our education. Because in this part of the education, they study the astrological world because billionaires use it to rule the world. So. You can start see how important the flatters started to become, you know, a real uh, mind-blowing <laughs> thing. And uh, of course, all this uh, situation that um, we are talking about is based. If you want to start see, you know, the concept of the matrix, that the concept of seeing the code behind the the, the things, you must be uh, start to studying this kind of uh, education and also schematria. Of course, know the uh, the Aleister Crowley <laughs> gematria, but that is important because all Freemasonry, all the elites, uh, they study, of course, with his own teacher. In this case, is the uh, the 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 Aleister Crowley satanic guy. But if you want to understand what why these elites use so many symbols and how why they speak in the mode that he talks and that kind of things. You need to study at least a, a few things of that, of this, uh, of this uh, knowledge, because if not, you're never going to see the matrix. You never, never. You're going to be blind. Um, so, uh, you know, everything is energy. Uh, if you want to find the secret, you need to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, and everything out there is that. Symbols are little piece of code that translate, you know, in frequency and vibration in our brains. When we speak, when we talk, we produce literally vibrations through the air. So, uh, schematria, trivium, quadrivium, the educational system, all that kind of things are really that kind of concept here. If you just think this is only apply to electrical things or magnetic things, you're going to lose a big part of the picture, you know? Because you can see in that way, of course, but you can, you know, uh, some guy said that this quote is not from Tesla, but uh, I believe that uh, it's really good for, for him. So I, I believe could be uh, from Tesla, but it's not, it's a nice quote. But the Earth is a realm, not a planet. It's not an, uh, an object. It has no edge. At least nobody see the edge, never. 
uh, is a machine, is a Tesla coil. And you can see it really quickly in the Aurora Borealis things and the magnetic fields. I mean, we are made and, uh, you know, based on electricity, magnetism and all that kind of stuff. So when you started, you know, I, I call Schematrix because it's like, uh, you know, to understand the concepts of scene behind the scenes. Uh, but when you start to look in all these kind of situations, uh, you're gonna see, you wanna start to see the things a little different. For example, when you see rockets, you're gonna see obelisk, because that is what they they are. They this is a symbolic penetration to the mother earth. That is what they you know. This is represent the masculine part. You know, in the uh, in fact, look how deep they go. That one of the biggest. Uh, uh, rockets uh, shooting to the, you know, to the sky. They put the word Thor, literally, because all the NASA guys was founded also by, you know, occultist guy. So all the time they use it in that way. For example, we have our best friend Elon Musk, and um, for ex this is a recent news. Elon Musk create the Ad Astra School. Unhappy with the educational their children receive, Elon Musk create a Dastra school, which is surrounded by a halo of mystery and secrecy, and the teaching inside the school is based on hermetics education. So, I mean, <laughs> what's going on? You know, supposedly this guy who is really, you know, very technological guy, He's unsatisfied with the educational system, and he creates an hermetic school system to, to teach her children. And if you want to enter to the web page, it's not allowed. It's just only for the parents that pay for that education. It's surrounded by a halo of mysticism and secrecy. So as you can see, these things is in our days also. In fact, the word Elon means light and mask means sun. So sun of light. It's a, another coincidence thing, you know, because this guy appeared from nothing, you know, like uh, another, like other uh, supposedly modern scientists. Um, I'm gonna show ten slides more, and if you want to make a break, and then I I continue. You just uh, I do whatever you want. So one of the first uh, rocket scientists who's uh, who uh, contributed in the founding of NASA which is Chuck Parson. Uh, he was, of course, an occultist. He was part of the Aleister Crowley crowd. Uh, he joined to the esoteric organizations led by Crowley, like the Ordo Templis Orientis. Parsons claimed that this, uh, his religion and magical belief did not contradict his scientific words, and he made prayers to the pagan god Pan. We're gonna see why he made that. And uh, this guy was so, you know, full-time a magician that he dies performing a magical experiment. I, I, supposedly, this guy must be died, you know, making some rockets <laughs> work and some rockets, some rockets explode and he died. No, he died performing in a magical <laughs> experiment. Unbelievable. Uh, of course, all that has to do with uh, space, space, sex, space, X, is all related with sex. That is why they worship the god Pan. And even Shaq Parson made their own uh, comic book. And all the time you're gonna see the color orange, because orange is the 33 in Shematria. Uh, you're gonna see uh, the sex, uh, you know, all the time proposing. So if you wanna be like a science of, uh, you know, rocket guy, it's, you need also to be part of the sexual perversion because sexual is a really powerful energy and you can use it uh, for love and for do nice things, but you can also buy people with sex. If you are an ad addict to sex, it's more easy to, you know, to corrupt you. So this is Pan. That is why Disney used it in his throne. But who is Pan? Who is really Pan? Pan is a demonic pagan god of sexual perversion, pedophilia, penis erect. The attribute or symbol associated with Pan are goods, 
pastures, umbrella, uh, phallus, and the flute. So that is why he played a flute, flout, I don't know how to pronounce it. And of course, one of the famous pictures of the rover, uh, who says, is in, this is an official picture of NASA, he, he, they, they use rover rib pan. Supposedly that is for panoramic, but you know, you can believe what you want. So this is part of the symbolic of the pan. In fact, in, in, in a Spanish world, we talk in the religious people say you uh, take the, the breath of every day, uh, you know, it's called pan. This is the pan of every day. And when you go to a church, they put the pan in your mouth, you know, to do that uh, supposedly to uh, take out your sins. In fact, we told, uh, we told us that before everything forms, it was a big continent called Pangea, the earth of Pan. I mean, the earth of the demon, literally. That is why they use this name all the time involved in our system. And that is why you can start see all these guys doing, you know, the horns, uh, doing the, this kind of symbol. They camouflage in TV series or, you know, in heavy in music things like, uh, no, no, this is from heavy metal. This is not demonic symbols. Come on. I mean, Supposedly, you can see here involved in NASA things, you know, this old concept. So this is all the astronauts like heavy metal. This astronaut like, you know, really heavy metal. This guy, they like what? He has the eyes of Horus directly. This guy who are the diver to help the astronaut, they also like what? Heavy metal. I mean, all the time. And this is just, you know, a tiny part. Uh, you can really research a lot of these things in the rocket scientists and you're going to find a lot, a lot. So this is, you know, the, the concept that I want to show you when I'm talking about the Shematrix, because all these things, all these gestures, all these kind of uh, artistic picture, you're just going to understand if you research in this type of education. Uh, you need to know the both parts, because if not, if, if, if you say, no, but that are demonic things, that depends why, you know, um, why you use it, in, in what mode, mode you use. You need to know, you know, the bad things. You not need to practice. You just need to know to recognize these kind of things. Because if you don't take the time to understand this, you're never going to see these connections. That doesn't mean you need to practice. It just, you know, incorporate the knowledge that is, you know, we, we I think I'm going to quickly because we, we know about this connection based on Disney, Nazis, scientists, NASA, Freemasonry, uh, even the actual, you can see how they, you know, like the Phoenix concept all the time, they reborn the same concept, you know, this is like 80, 60 years before that now, they present that this, but it's the same name, it's the same concept, it's, it's just the same bullshit, you know, all the time. That they, they, they don't even make new things. Um, in fact, for example, one of the mindset to brainwash and you know the people accept the moon landings was this um, this park, like Disney Park, before Disney Park, they create directly, not Disney Park, directly the inner space adventure. <laughs> I mean, two years before that the moon landing happen, they create this and who is presented? Monsanto. So another coincidence, I believe. So sorry for the Spanish language, but uh, I, I believe everybody knows the quote for Mark Twain. And um, you can see all the connections. And this is the important, the, the, the famous black box out there is a the television, but not because, you, you know, it's a nice uh, technological device It's because Literally, it's a nervous system manipulation by electromagnetic fields from monitors. And if you can go a little back, you, you, I mean, uh, remember that history about the radio show that Orwell made, that, you know, the world of the, exactly, and the people start killing themselves and screaming out, and that just was a radio transmission. <laughs> I mean, don't, they, they don't even use any kind of holographic technology, uh, that kind of things. But because 
all is vibration energy that is another kind of vibration and energy so uh, if you don't have that software to understand for example that language doesn't matter if you heard that transmission because you don't have that language that language in your brain and the same thing happens with all the rest of the education we can see this name in every part of the space is you know yeah it's out there all the time and uh, i finished this part with these things I, you are guys are good you want to i keep with this or you want to make a break you keep going okay okay so um this goes so deeply that for example the argos and maybe you think what is you know related argos with nasa argos mean son of zeus and we know that zeus represent the thunder the light the creator you can see that refer in the old media you know nickelodeon hitler uh, persham even the astronaut uh, chris hatfield has the you know the thunder in the face but this represents that, that represents I am the son of the light. It's like Elon Musk, but with another name. But it's also interesting that NASA has a system called Argos. I mean, what's going on, man? All the time, this company uses the same names. But the, the funny thing is the Argos system is, that is what they use to make the astronaut float. That is the name of the wire system. That is Argos. This is Argos. You know? That is a coincidence? You tell me. But uh, that is how performing. In fact, David Copperfield is also a Freemasonry. He admitted. So the system that they use today in the ISS station is come from this guy. This cable only have one millimeter and support more, more than 100 kilos. If you paint this cable in green screen, in green uh, paint, you just erase digital in real time today. So look how deep these connections goes. You know, uh, all this, this is Argos. This is uh, Zeus in space. This is the system. Here you can see how David Copperfield performed the same acts in real time with a lot of public seeing him. And he can, you know, the NASA even have the patent, look this guy. And what happened? You know, he stopped before doing the somersault. Here we have the national <laughs> team peak who failed the gravity. This guy make a uh, um, somersault, but he comes forward. But he make force backward and he comes forward. I mean, <laughs> supposedly that doesn't happen in space. We have the Superman style there. All the time, they they need to prove to stay in zero gravity. You need, you know, repeat, repeat, repeat. This has, you know, this is hilarious because yeah, what? Yeah. The, <laughs> why she, you know, she make that position, you know, like uh, okay, uh, uh, now, yeah, now. <laughs> you can go forward, you can go backwards. This is one of the best pieces out there to show the, the wire. Not the best one, but it's one of the best because you had the pinky finger there, you know, but look, and this is this is amazing because this girl, this girl uh, is, isn't like, you know, accelerated the video. Here you can see how the cloth start to be pulled. Uh, but this girl, he make this kind of situation of, uh, to prove the zero gravity. But she gets so, you know, uh, with all the cables uh, around his uh, her body that uh, these guys, this guy here, this guy here, needs to take out of his pocket a baseball. I mean, what is doing a baseball in the pocket of the astronaut in space? We don't uh, understand that. I mean, he took quickly that because he detect that this girl is totally you know wrap around the cables so they want to uh, distract you so uh, I, you can see first see the girl all the movement of the all the movement that she must be do to you know and then he she was pulling back 
And at the same time, now look the uh, baseball player trying to distract you uh, at the same time that the girl trying to look at this. Uh, uh, quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, you know, just that video clip is enough to don't believe anymore in ISS. But we know how the globe heads are, so let's continue. They have even uh, patented the method of the uh, gravity, reduced gravity conditions. The first plane was the Gatsby plane. Uh, I believe you can put inside here whatever you want. You can make whatever set you like inside that plane. I don't say that this is the plane where the ISS is, you know, happening, but uh, we don't know the technology that NASA have. So, no, because the, the free fall effect is just one minute. Yeah, one minute if you go 30,000 feet. But if you go more up, you have more minutes. If you combine that with wireless, if you combine that, okay, if you combine that with a uh, um, CGI compositing system, you have an eternal life fake in the space. It's just not one minute. Um, we can see here that all they as present in the ISS, you can replicate in, the, in free fall uh, plane, no zero gravity plane because that is another brainwash. But you can see the same behaviors, you know. They never show us something unique to be in space. All the things that this guy show us could be replicated really easy in Earth with, you know, regular technology. I mean, the plane is at 100 years old technology. It's not even uh, a maze technology. We can do the same thing in TV series, in movies. Uh, here you can compare the size of the cloud. This cloud are totally static. And of course they have this lens, uh, this um, uh, spherical lens effect because when you see this, you must be see in, in, in real life, this is like this paper passing by like that. It's not spherical. It's a straight texture of uh, cloud passing like this, but here, they deform or they map in a spherical 3D sphere, and uh, that is the sensation you have. But the, the size of the cloud are the same that you have on a plane. In fact, the image that, that's come now, this image is from a Swissen, um, Swiss, uh, Swedish uh, balloon, scientist balloon, uh, that showed the Earth uh, 40 kilometers up in the sky. You can see the horizon totally straight, but look how live the clouds are and compare with this. So this is a texture, nothing more. This is real life. And the horizon is straight, 40 kilometers, something that is impossible. You know, you can, there is no standard reflection at that altitude. So there is no anything causing the straight of the horizon. That is the way it is in real life. And um, like I tell you before, um, because I need to finish, um, this is our technology today. You have a green screen, just a green screen, and you can see all this set is virtual. You can see uh, reflection, you can see chroma key, fine in chroma key, uh, fine chroma key techniques, all in real time. You can see um, even transparency. Uh, you can see motion tracker in real time. Uh, you can see Refraction and is an isotrophic refraction. Uh, in a moment, you're gonna see contact shadows. I mean, all this is digital, and you can buy it for uh, sixty thousand dollars. How many? How much money? They use the same effects, you know. I mean, and if you went, look at this. This is out of eight to get out of the virtual set, and this happened the same. I mean, I don't see. They, they have real structure, of course. But they use, in fact, if you go to the, this site, uh, this website, NASA is a client. Of course, they're gonna t tell you, no, but we are client because we produce uh, you know, TV content and we use that kind of technology, but maybe they use also in the ISS and that kind of things. You can have, you know, like a bubble in the ISS, you know, the reflections, uh, inverse reflections. I mean, 
this technology is out there from the uh, 2000. Of course, it's getting better, getting better and better, but this is just broadcasting technology. This is not, you know, unique technology that you can achieve if you are NASA. So keep in mind that uh, we have today uh, in a simple tablet, a real time uh, erase object. So imagine that with a cable in the ISS that will be really easy. And remember that the majority of the live feeds, they are not live feeds. They are pre-programming feeds. In fact, there is an error in the school uh, when the children make a question and the astronaut respond with another answer than the original question of the, chill, of, of the child. So you can see how there is all pre-programming things. They are not real life. And when you see uh, this is from a university. This is a, you know, it's just a simple university project. You can have depth in virtual objects, you know, process with a, with a webcam. This is just webcam in that room, creating depth, trans, um, translating that depth in numbers and make all this kind of interaction. And that is why you can explain uh, this kind of behavior from the astronaut that he's supposedly touching something, but there is nothing there. In fact, this guy all the time looks, you know, at the monitor in front like these guys do. They all the time see a screen that they never show us because there is what the magic thing happened in that block, uh, you know, black box, the television. So uh, this is how deep they go. And this is the last one. Sorry for the, 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 the time delay. Give me two minutes more. For example, this guy is from Italy and they, you know, all the time playing with these toys. I don't know what, you know, the professional thing with that, but first he gonna, you know, like fly up and now it's going to fall down. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> and he turned, you know, I, I believe that this guy inside say, oh no, my shit. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> he can, you know, get a smile in front of camera because uh, he's going to be, you know, but look how, what? Ah, it's falling down. Oh. You must be aware that the, the, the flight lose objects that pulling up, for example, you know? Uh, what? <laughs> so what happened there, man? I mean, it's, yeah, Argos system. Also the robots falling down and you can see here all the pieces that start moving, you know? So what happened there? Team Pig. Give applause to Team Pig, man. Yeah. Thank you, team. Yeah. You have this one that's oh 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 oh. This is a short one. You must be, you know, really put your eye, but eh, cut. Cut. So you can see that, and that is why this was an, on 70s, and it's like the, the crop cycle thing. At the time goes by, they get better. All the time they use miniature, because in visual effects, if you want to achieve reality, uh, in fact, in these decades, it's better to use uh, miniature and photograph or film miniatures, because uh, trying to replicate the light conditions in real life with CGI, even today, is really hard. And we have a lot of render and shines, but it's required a lot of time and uh, you're never going to replicate real life. Uh, you know, the, the, the light, the behavior of the light in real life is impossible. Even in the Star Wars, uh, still using miniatures to uh, film and, and then combine with visual effects, CGI and that kind of things. So you can see here how this, uh, they are getting better and better, you know, all the time. So, I mean, what happened? The, the space changed so quickly that, and of course, uh, there is here a situation because this is an official site from RT News and the people start, you know, uh, start uh, typing anytime they see this National Association of Space Animation, NASA make the best sci-fi movies. I mean, these things just three years ago never happened. Nobody questioned gravity three years ago. Nobody questioned Copernicus or Galileo or Einstein and or even the astronaut or even the images. 
So that is what is happened today, and that is why we are here in this convention, you know, because this is gain steam really, really quickly, and they are really aware of that. So if you want to make a break, uh, I can finish the presentation in the next 30 minutes after the lunch, or you decide. If you start to think in an, at what altitude, you can find the, the same result at 20 kilometers. The curve of the air is totally perceptible and no doubt. So when you start to see balloons and rocket launches, you know, it's flat. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter.